Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Today I have built a $60 budget deck for another Commander Legends Commander, and that is Belby Corrupted Observer. Belby is a legendary creature zombie elf. She costs a black and a green, and she's a 2-2. At the beginning of each player's post-combat main phase, that player adds two colorless mana for each of your opponents who lost life this turn. Belby excites me for the very simple reason that it's very, very easy to generate a lot of mana early in the game. There are very many ways to be generating that extra six mana on your second turn, and I plan to exploit that as much as I can. Now, you might be worried that... Your opponents are going to take advantage of that, but I promise you that most of the time your opponents aren't trying to do damage to each of your opponents, unless that's specifically part of their goal, like the Anawan deck. So it kind of depends on the meta, but most of the time you're going to be the one that benefits the most from Belby's ability. I did make this a budget deck for two reasons. The first is I hadn't seen a budget deck yet for this, so I really wanted to make something that stood out. And the second was I wanted to challenge myself because I haven't built a budget deck in quite a while. If you're into breaking the bank though, I will include some recommendations for that in this video. And just know that my primary goal is to deliver a deck that's under $60. Keep in mind that this deck was under $60 at the time of recording, so prices change and this may fluctuate from what you see here. All right, first let's talk about how we're going to activate Belby. We've got a lot of ways of doing this, so let's just go through all of them. The first is to do some sort of a one-time effect that makes all of your opponents lose one life, at least. And those effects are found in Thrill Parasite, Smallpox, and Vicious Rumors. Thrill Parasite has an extort trigger on it, so when you cast it, you can pay an additional mana and everyone will lose a life and you gain a life. So having a lot of extort in this deck is ideal, uh, but it is only a one-time use because it's on cast. So either have a lot of extort or just a couple. So I put Thrill Parasite in here because it's very cheap to cast initially. Smallpox and Vicious Rumors will also help with taking care of hand sizes and boards and dealing that one damage that you need. Then we have a couple of things that can activate to do the damage to our opponents. We've got Shepherd of Rot, Pestilence, and Leech Ridden Swamp. All of these will either cost one mana or just tapping it to deal one damage to each opponent, or in Pestilence's case, it deals damage to all creatures as well. These are nice if you can efficiently keep on activating them, but we really want to rely more on things that we can do every turn without a lot of headroom. Before we get to those though, we've got to talk about the ones that, when they attack, make everyone lose one life, and there are a lot of those. We've got Hooded Blightfang, Mardu Shadow Spear, Night Market Lookout, Pulse Tracker, Thornbow Archer, and Vicious Conquistador. All of these, when they attack, they make each opponent lose one life. And that's really good, but they're not going to do anything the first turn that we get them out. So we really want to get them on the first turn, if we can, or before we get Belby out, so we can attack with it as soon as we do get Belby out, and then we can take advantage of that extra mana then. We've also got Retreat to Hagra, which will trigger whenever we play a land which it's usually every turn during our first main phase, so we can count on that as being a pretty regular thing. We then have Endbringer, which can really only do this to one of our opponents, but he has some other modes that are more effective later in the game when we are getting activations off of Belby and need somewhere to dump our mana. Okay, for the best ones in this deck, they have to be the ones that trigger on their own every turn. We've got Loyal Subordinate, which will make each opponent lose three life at the beginning of combat if we control our commander, which is perfect. It does a lot of damage to our opponents, and we get that mana from Belby automatically. We've also got Ill-Gotten Inheritance, Palace Siege, Sanctum of Stone Fangs, and Triskaidekaphobia, which all trigger at our upkeep. 
which means every single turn our opponents are going to be drained at least one, sometimes more, and that will set us on the right path to get the mana from Belby when it comes to our post-combat main phase. There are two more in this category that I want to talk about, and those are Stryonic Resonator and Wound Reflection, and these will basically double the effects of either Belby's trigger, giving us extra mana for a, a small cost with the Resonator, or doubling the life loss that all of our drain effects are doing with wound reflection. These are very nice to have and it will speed up the game even more. Imagine getting 10 mana from Belby automatically at your post-combat main phase. Just incredible. Okay, now that we've got all of this mana, we've got to have something to dump it into. So a popular option that I've seen so far is loading your deck full of Eldrazi's. So I've got a couple of those that were on the budget side. I've got Artisan of Kozilek, Breaker of Armies, Desolation Twin, and Ulamog's Crusher. These are all big Eldrazi's and they're gonna be big beaters for you. You can swing with them every turn and they'll usually do something bad like Annihilator. Artisan of Kozilek is probably the best because it can get you something from the graveyard, essentially making it your eternal witness in this deck, but it's also really big and it has Annihilator. So really, really nice to get out for only three mana. Colossus of Akros is a big defender at worst that you paid two for, and a 2020 indestructible trampler at best, which you paid four more for. And this can be very threatening to your opponents and very hard to deal with unless they have some sort of exile effect. Conduit Ruin is another Eldrazi that I've put in this deck and it can search up your other Eldrazi's or if you choose to play lots of artifacts, you can search up things like Mere Battlesphere so that you can cast them on the next turn when you get Belby activated again. Maelstrom Colossus is in here for the Cascade. Cascade is really good in this deck, but it's underutilized because of the mana color restrictions and because of budget restrictions. But Maelstrom Colossus will help you get at least one more thing out and will help you get some, either a big beater or another drainer to help you progress the game along. Meteor Golem is typically a very subpar card. Seven mana for destroying any non-land permanent just really isn't good enough, and it's only a 3-3. But paying one mana to destroy any non-land permanent is pretty good. So only use him when you have that mana available and you really need to deal with a target on the board. Otherwise, usually you have a better target that will get you a bigger creature onto the board. But Meteor Golem is nice in this deck because it's super cheap to get out. Next we have Rakshasa Debaser the first colored creature that I've talked about in this section. It's a great target for Encore when you have Belby generating a lot of mana. Getting creatures out of your opponent's graveyards to fill up your board is really nice, especially with your big beaters that you're already going to be wanting to swing at people. And he's pretty threatening as he is, so just getting him out swinging and getting one creature from that person's graveyard is pretty nice as well. Next we have Steel Hellkite, which is the best thing that we can get to a a colorless dragon. It has a fire breathing effect that we can dump a lot of mana into, or it has kind of a one-sided board wipe effect that can be a real deterrent for your opponents to try to deal with. So it costs exactly six, so getting him out on turn two is super easy. Next we have Terastazon, and he can deal with some troublesome enchantments or artifacts pretty early in the game when normally it would take a long time to get him out. Uh, so getting rid of things like Rhystic Study or Smothering Tithe is what Terastazon is really useful for. Next we have Villas, Broker of Blood. You're going to end up losing a lot of life in this deck. A lot of the effects will also affect us, and Typically, if you're generating a lot of mana, you are being a target in the game as well. So having Villas out on the board is probably one of the best things that this deck can do early on. He's one of the best card draw engines we have, and a lot of times you'll intentionally take the hit with his other abilities so you can get more card advantage out of him. He's super easy to get out as long as you can get the black mana, so make sure you have lots of ways to get black mana, especially because most of the colored cards in this deck have black mana in their mana costs. Next we have God Pharaoh's Statue. It costs exactly six mana, again, so you can get it out on turn two, and it's a stacks piece. So it slows down your opponents, and it punishes them at the end step. So 
it's nice to get out. It doesn't activate Belby, but it does slow your opponents down. And last for this category, I've included Sandworm Convergence. Normally an eight mana enchantment that's pretty hard to get out. Now it only costs two green mana if you're using Belby correctly. So making a 5-5 worm every turn very early on makes it very hard for your opponent to attack you if you always have something to block. And combining this with your other big beaters in the deck, this is going to overwhelm the board pretty easily. All right, now on to our ramp package. So first I have to talk about mana fixers. We've got Bog Initiate and Cascading Cataracts. Both of these will transform our colorless mana into colored mana. And Bog Initiate, I was so surprised to find this card and find that it was cheap. You pay one and you get one black mana out and you can do this any number of times that you want. So you can turn all of that colorless mana into black mana to use on your villas or other things to help fix your mana. And Cascading Cataracts, you can just tap it as soon as you get all of that mana from Belby and just turn it all into whatever you need. Two very essential cards to have in this deck and they're both pretty cheap. Burnished Heart costs three to cast and three to activate so one activation of belby will get you two lands onto the battlefield basically for free without paying any colored mana so burnished heart is really nice to have in this deck for a ramp piece Elves of Deep Shadow is the one mana dork that we have in this deck. It's the best mana dork for Golgari, and hitting ourselves for one won't be such a big deal, especially if we have Villas on the battlefield helping us out with some card draw with that. Solemn Simulacrum is super easy to cast with Belby and just a generally good card draw ramp piece for your deck. We also have Cultivate, Ramping Growth, and Haro. They're all relatively cheap ramp spells that you should definitely include in your deck. For our mana rocks, we have Arcane Signet, Soul Ring, Dreamstone Hedron, Everflowing Chalice, Golgari Signet, Hedron Archive, Talisman of Resilience, and Thought Vessel. All of these are pretty cheap thanks to Commander Legends reprinting a lot of them, and having the ability to dump our colorless mana into mana rocks helps us progress the game even faster. I've found that Dreamstone Headrun is one of the best things that we can cast with Belby's mana to really put us a step ahead in the future turns. We also have Cryptolith Fragment, which will deal damage to everyone, which activates Belby. It probably won't flip over, but it's a really good activator for Belby, and it gives us more mana, so that's another good mana rock to have in your deck. Horizon Stone will help us keep the mana through phases if we don't have anything to spend it on right now, and it helps us with X spells if you've got a lot of that in your deck. And then we have Wild Growth, which is perfect to cast on turn one, getting you some extra mana for turn two, when you cast your commander and you can have one of your your drain effects that costs one mana as well. Moving on to card draw, I think the best one in this category is probably Damnable Pact, which is a sorcery for X and two black, and it says target player draws X cards and loses X life. For when you activate Belby, you can dump that six mana into there, pay two more black, and you get six cards and lose six life. Really, really nice to have very early on, refills your hand, and it really gets you going after having to spend a lot of your resources getting everything else out. We have Knight's Whisper and Read the Bones, both of which are kind of cantrips in black, uh, letting us draw some cards and lose some life to pay for those cards. Next, we have Nissa's Revelation, which costs a lot, but is really easy to cast with Belby. You scry five, reveal the top card of the library. If it's a creature card, you draw cards equal to its power and you gain life equal to its toughness. With the number of big creatures in this deck, the likelihood that you're going to hit one off of the top is pretty high and, and draw a lot of cards refilling your hand. And most likely you're only paying two green mana to cast this spell. Next we have Return of the Wild Speaker for the same reason that Nissa's Revelation is in here. And that's because we have a lot of big creatures and getting that card draw off of those creatures is really nice. Staff of Nin is another one of those effects that we can target one player to lose life if we don't have the right resources to deal damage to everybody that can help us get Belby going, but it also provides an extra card at upkeep, which is pretty essential to consistent card draw. And finally, we have Tamiya's Journal, which at the beginning of our upkeep, we're going to investigate, which gets us a token that we can sacrifice for two mana to 
draw a card. And then if we manage to get three clue tokens, we can search our library for a card and put it in our hand after sacrificing those three clues. Most of the time, you're just going to use it for those clues and getting that extra clue on the battlefield so you can pay two when you use Belby is not going to be hard at all. And Tamiya's journal is really nice to get out super early. All right, now on to our final utility section. This is going to cover our interaction pieces, protection and recursion. If I were to change anything about this deck in upgrading the deck, I would definitely include more interaction, protection and recursion. There's just not a lot that we've put in here that's really budget and most of the deck is really tuned around activating Belby and getting lots of big creatures out onto the battlefield. So I think that this section needs more work, but this is what I came up with for the budget build. So on the interaction front, we've got Beast Within, Nature's Claim, and Putrefy. All of those will help us kind of catch all for anything that's on the battlefield that we need to take care of. For our board wipe, we have Finale of Eternity, which is a sorcery that costs X and two black and it says destroy up to three target creatures with toughness x or less if x is 10 or more return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield so if after a board wipe or something this is very helpful to get out because belby's not going to be hard to activate again after that and get a whole bunch of mana pumped into finale of eternity you only have to scrounge up six more mana to get the full potential out of finale of eternity and you can take care of whatever's left on the board and get a, a whole board full of big scary creatures. Speaking of board wipes, we've got In Garrick's Wake, which will not wipe our board, but will wipe everybody else's. It's just in here because it's a really, really good card, and casting it is super easy. With Belby, you only have to pay three essentially for it if you can get Belby to work. For our recursion and our protection, we have Bala Ged Recovery, which can double as a land if we need it and can return a card from our graveyard to our hand. And we've got Swift Foot Boots, which will help us protect our commander or give one of our attacking creatures that needs to attack in order to activate haste uh, so that we can get that Belby trigger off of the first turn that it comes down. Okay, I'm going to save my mana base for the deck list. So if you want to check out the mana base, go check out the deck list. I just know that there's not a lot of interesting stuff to talk about there that we haven't already talked about on the mana front. Let's move on to breaking the bank. So if I were to upgrade this deck, I would want these kinds of cards in the deck. And, and the first thing I would think of is better big creatures. We want stuff that has a huge impact and that we can get out super, super early in the game. So first off, there's Worm Coil Engine, which costs six, so you can get it out on that turn two and you can be swinging at it and it, it'll protect your board. Worm Coil Engine is just an all-star card in Commander. So definitely a good pick there. Obviously, we're going to want bigger and better Eldrazi, so we're going to get Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, Kozilek Butcher of Truth, Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. Just pick your favorite big Eldrazi's and stick them all in this deck because they cost six less to cast and they're going to get out super early alongside your opponents who aren't going to be able to keep up with that. So go crazy with the big Eldrazi's and... and go big on the colorless theme. I think that's that's the real critical thing here is that you need to be focusing on utilizing colorless things as much as possible so you don't have as much problem with mana fixing and you can just rely on Belby to get you a lot of colorless mana. With that in mind, I've got Ugin the Ineffable as a recommendation. First of all, you can bring him out with one activation of Belby and he makes all of your colorless things cost less. And, and if that's not a, enough of a reason, he's got some good interaction on him. So that's definitely an include that I would include in this deck. But he didn't really make sense with the number of colorless things that I have in my deck right now. So that's why I left him out. Speaking of colorless things, Blightsteel Colossus is obviously a good pick if you want to use Infect in your deck and get him out super early. There are also lots of X spells that you can do, most notably Torment of Hailfire and Anexanguinate. Just pumping a lot of mana into these is sure to wreck your opponent and it's going to be really nice to have. For some more Planeswalker recommendations, I would go with Ugin the Spirit Dragon and Karn Liberated. With Belby, they only cost one or two more mana, and they're great high mana cost Planeswalkers to have 
early in the game helping you control the board and this is really going to put you a leg up on your opponent. Usually planeswalkers take a lot to get going and they're a little bit slower in commander but <laughs> your ability to get them out on turn two or three is really really powerful. We've got Finale of Devastation, it's probably one of the best tutors in Magic right now, and you've got green and you've got a lot of mana, so go crazy with Finale of Devastation, get your Eldrazi's, whatever you need to get them out and get them hitting fast. If you have enough mana to pump into that, it'll give them haste and a buff. Next we've got Apex Devastator. Now I mentioned earlier that because of budget restrictions, Cascade wasn't really a prominent part of the deck. This is what I'm talking about, Apex Devastator is kind of a pricey card right now, but he cascades four times and he costs 10 mana and that will help you get really really big things out or just more drainers really you can't really go wrong with cascade in this deck it's it's, it's an all-star so if you have an apex devastator definitely go for it in this deck next we have twilight prophet has a great upkeep ability if you can get the city's blessing it helps you with your card draw and it can be another one of those creatures that activates belby a lot it is kind of pricey it's four mana so getting out early is actually not very viable in this deck but fixing our mana but fixing our card draw issues is worth it and you can start gaining life from twilight prophet as well so that's a big plus next we have tooth and nail again for the same reason as finale of devastation this is just really easy to get out and tutoring for two creatures is really nice because you have a lot of mana and you're definitely going to have a way to utilize those two creatures. Next is Planar Bridge, another one of the tutors. It's very, very easy to activate and it goes along with the colorless theme. Play this on your second turn and then activate it on your third turn. That's, you can't really get better than that. And then my last breaking the bank recommendation is Pontiff of Blight. I've talked about Extort before, and the ability to give all of your creature spells extort, letting you pay an extra mana to deal the damage to everybody else, makes it so casting the smaller creatures at the beginning of your turn, no matter if they can do that damage immediately or not, will be a more consistent thing with Pontiff of Blight out because you can use extort. All right, and that is it. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other videos and make sure to check out our Patreon. We have exclusive perks. We play games on Discord, have a great community over there. You'll get merch and anything you contribute there will support us directly. So head on over to patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video and all of the videos on this channel. If you go through the link in the description, it's an affiliate link and that will help us grow the channel. They ship nationwide, so go get your card singles there and they'll be able to ship them to you. Make sure to follow us on social media to keep up with the latest news. Links to all of those in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this deck and find a way to make it your own and really have fun with Belby. Thank you. Have a good day.